So, last time in this now apparently ongoing series where I look at cancelled projects, I had a look at some unreleased and cancelled movies. And in there at some point, I said that I'd love to talk about the same for video games as well. Now, unlike movies, I don't play a lot of games, but I have always been drawn to unmade games even more so than movies, and spend the time I could be playing actual games reading about these things instead. Again, like with the movie video, I'm going to try and stick to things that were outright cancelled rather than beta versions of things that would eventually come out. Again, tried. Some of these are just way too interesting to not talk about. So before we get to categories to break things up, let's just get the most obvious one out of the way first. Oh, God. Silent Hills was to be the ninth entry in the long dormant Silent Hill franchise that hasn't had a new game since 2012, but was quite notoriously cancelled when Konami had their falling out with game director Hideo Kojima in 2015 because Konami is the worst video game company of all time. The amount of talent that was to be involved in this game was absolutely staggering. You had Kojima of Metal Gear and Death Stranding fame, Guillermo del Toro, who still isn't having any luck even in the game industry, and even Junji Ito? God, God damn it, Konami. This was, of course, revealed with the release of PT, a playable teaser that scared the absolute shit out of everyone on the internet so badly that it makes me kind of glad they removed it following the game's cancellation, because there is no way I am ever playing this shit, man. I don't think it needs to be said that this would have been absolutely amazing, considering just the demo alone blew everything around it out of the water at the time, but it probably would have been a better idea than fucking Metal Gear Survive. Okay, so now we can get onto the ones that you hopefully haven't heard as much about. The sequel to the underrated little known game uh, Super Mario 64. Mario 64, my favorite game of all time, just so you know, was at some point supposed to get a sequel, as Shigeru Miyamoto began talking about it in interviews as early as 1997. The most we really know about it is that it was going to re-implement the cut two-player mode from the original game with Mario and Luigi. But this idea never made it any further than a demo level that Nintendo refuses to let us see. At some point, it was going to be titled Super Mario 128, which would later be recycled for a tech demo they used to show off the game. GameCube in 2000. Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming. This was never planned to be a full game, just to show off how the GameCube could handle murdering 128 Marios at once, with the technology later being used in games like Metroid Prime and Pikmin. A separate Mario 128 that wasn't the tech demo they showed for the GameCube, but probably not still a sequel to Mario 64, was still being considered by Miyamoto as late as 2005, with Nintendo continually promising it would be shown at E3 for three years straight, only for that to be a fucking lie. We probably won't ever get to see what they were trying to do with 128 for like an entire decade, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the ideas were implemented into future Mario games like Galaxy anyway. Rockstar's most notable cancelled projects include Agent, a game they announced in 2007 for the PlayStation 3 that was to be a stealth title set during the Cold War that we never saw anything of aside from some concept art and environment screenshots that we weren't even supposed to see, and it wasn't even officially delisted from Rockstar's website until 2021. And the sequel to Bully. Maybe. There's been like back and forth for years with gaming websites posting leaks on supposed new information and Rockstar literally not saying anything at all, but they did renew the trademark for it in 2021, so maybe it is still coming out? Oh god, it's happening to me. What we do know from interviews is that at some point it was cancelled, maybe more than once, and also there's maybe a playable demo at Rockstar floating around according to only the most trustworthy of websites. Reddit. Half-Life fans have it even worse than people who want a bully sequel though when it comes to the 18 years of back and forth rumors about Half-Life 2 Episode 3 that is most definitely probably never going to come out. But there have been other Half-Life titles that are more decidedly not ever happening. Someone at Valve for some reason thought that making an entire game out of the scariest level of Half-Life 2 was a good idea, with a prequel episode centering around Ravenholm beginning life as a year-long project by Junction Point Studios. Before it was handed off to another team and then cancelled by Valve, only a year before release because they must have realized that this would mean they would have actually released a new Half-Life game. The incredible no clip on YouTube just very recently released an entire hour-long video going through the completed parts of the game and oh my god is this footage both amazing and so painful to watch. The Nintendo 64 was supposed to be home to Earthbound 64, the then third game in the Mother series, which was conceived as being a detective RPG set in a small village where you could develop relationships with the inhabitants over time. Footage of the game was shown off during its development at Space world from 1996 to 1998, but by 2000 the project became dead in the water despite being roughly 30 to 60 percent complete after an entire six years of development time as the release of the GameCube was on the horizon and suddenly this wasn't as impressive anymore. Most of what was planned for the game story-wise was reused for the eventual Mother 3 on the Game Boy Advance, but then that was never released outside of Japan. 
Fuck Earthbound fans, am I right? Okay, so again, this next one shouldn't really count because it did become something else eventually, but technically Doom 4 and Doom 2016 are not the same game, so I'm counting it. Doom 4 was announced in 2007 as a more serious reboot of the Doom series, where instead of Doom Guy, you played as some random members of an Earth resistance fighting against a demon invasion that was worked on all the way up until 2013, and had pretty significant progress made on it, but was cancelled because Bethesda felt they had just made a Call of Duty game. And from the available game, Play footage, I have to agree that while it doesn't look bad, it didn't really look like a Doom game either because the person playing the demo didn't even die once. Plus, the best parts, the glory kills, were reused in Doom 2016 anyway, so it's not all bad. I didn't find this out until very recently, but there was meant to be a sequel to The Simpsons Hit and Run. It didn't get very far past the idea phase, but an interview with one of the game's designers mentioned they were going to implement being able to connect vehicles together, like a car and a trailer, for example, but it was cancelled before any significant work could be made on it because EA bought The Simpsons so they could make the Simpsons game. No way, EA doing something bad? They would never. I'm not sure how many people remember the 2004 Transformers Armada PS2 game and its undefeated ragdoll physics, but developer Melbourne House was also set to work on a sequel based on Transformers Cybertron. That would have been set right after the Armada game with Unicron's demise causing a black hole that would have required you to travel to different planets around the galaxy to save your own. I am sure this would have been just as unnecessarily hard as its predecessor, but it would have been really cool to see what another Transformers game from these guys could have looked like. Super Mario Spikers was to be a Mario Strikers-esque volleyball game made by the same developers that was doomed the second they tried to incorporate hilariously violent wrestling elements into it, which unsurprisingly Nintendo was not very fond of. Come on though, this is hilarious. <laughs> During the Great Mega Man drought of the 2000s, there were a bunch of unreleased games that were scrapped by Capcom. Of course, there's the infamous Mega Man Legends 3 for the 3DS that was cancelled in 2011, and Mega Man Universe, which let players create their own horrible OC abomination <laughs> as well as levels to play in what was basically the Super Mario Maker of the Mega Man series five years before that even came out. But the one I find the most interesting is the scrapped reboot game Maverick Hunter, which was to be a first-person shooter take on Mega Man X that looked as your typical gritty mid-2000s reboot would. You were going to have a police officer as a sidekick in this one, but the only gameplay from demos shows the player fighting against generic nameless drones, with nothing aside from X even resembling Mega Man. This was to be part of a trilogy, with Zero being playable in the third one, but as far as I know, not a lot of people were very keen on this one, which is understandable considering how much it does not look like Mega Man. But I gotta be honest, I kinda dig this one. Not that it matters now, though. Gex Jr. was a pitched fourth entry in the Gex series that never got very far off the ground and was made more as a proof of concept by a new developer before it could become a full game. But literally like a month ago as of me making this video, a prototype demo of the game was released online that you can play for yourself. It had a dedicated fart button. Look at what they took from us. And finally, for our cancelled sequels, we have Among Us 2. No, no, seriously. In 2020, the devs behind the game announced they were going to release a sequel to Among Us, but cancelled it only a month later, as by that point the game had begun skyrocketing in popularity and memes, so they decided it was better to revamp and improve the original instead of creating an entirely new one, which was either a blessing or a curse, depending on how you want to look at it. Alright, now onto superhero games, because I had a superhero segment last time, so now I feel obligated to. An open world flash game was in the works during 2008 that had parkour elements and grind rails like Sonic, and each chapter of the game was meant to focus on a different villain from the comics. But this one had to be cancelled when Adobe shut down Flash in December 2020. Similarly, a Daredevil game never got made in 2003 because of creative differences between Marvel and Sony. A few commercials even came out that made the combat look kind of hilarious. You can also see like web swinging mechanics and grind rails again. They're just that fucking cool. And this. They put this in an actual trailer for the game. THQ was working on a Gotham by Gaslight game that fell through when they couldn't secure the rights to Batman, but they did make a prototype showing off the cool cape physics and gloomy environment that makes me kind of sad this one never got made. To coincide with the release of small indie film The Avengers, a tie-in first-person brawler of the same name was planned that would have adapted the Secret Invasion storyline from the comics, with each of the four playable Avengers having their own gameplay style, but it ultimately had to be cancelled because of the studio's financial issues. Although, the reason for this this one's is a little dumber than usual. Wikipedia tells me that because the Australian dollar rose in 2011, which is probably the only time in history that that's ever happened, THQ was paying their Australian division that was working on the game too much, so they just shut down the entire studio. I mean, what else could you have done, really? Then there was Marvel Chaos, an arena fighter that heavily embraced a comic book style and had what looked like extremely fun, destructible environments, but it was canned only months into development because of technical issues by publisher EA. 
beginning to think these EA guys are not very good at making decisions. Okay, and now for the rest of them. I didn't really have a name for this segment, so. Arguably, the most infamous canceled PlayStation game is Thrill Kill, an adult fighting game deemed to be so controversial and horrifically violent by the ratings board that it was refused released in most countries despite being entirely complete, which has meant that the game is now entirely playable online in the form of a ROM. Nice one, guys. And it's easy to see from the fact that everyone is half naked and there's blood and gore everywhere why this would have upset the 87 year old men that classify games. There have been plenty of cancelled Sonic games, many of which actually sounded pretty cool. From a 3D DS title just called Sonic DS, the solo Tales game Treasure Tales, basically just a Tony Hawk game, and a reskin of a Japanese RPG called Potful Mail that would have been about Sonic's sister that would have been ridiculous. And of course, the big one, Sonic Extreme. This was to be the Sega Saturn's console seller that would have been the very first 3D Sonic game long before Adventure and its beautiful cutscenes oh, yeah. that saw you navigating a 3D environment through sort of like a fisheye lens that kind of makes it a bit nauseating to watch. The four playable characters would have been the obvious Sonic Tails Knuckles alongside a new original character called Tiara... Oh, come on, man. Extreme was in development for three years and underwent a ton of changes during this time, with many elements and different versions of the title being scrapped along the way, like an initial Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog branding with the Freedom Fighters showing up. But what looks to be the final version here seems like it was really close to being done. There's a ton of footage online of the game's six stages, the entire soundtrack is essentially available, and we even know about all of the enemies and bosses that were planned. Like, there was going to be this giant Metal Sonic boss fight that looked fucking awesome, and I just know I would have played the absolute shit out of Extreme on Sonic Gems collection if this one had come to pass. It was a whole bunch of unfortunate events at once that caused this one to never be finished. Like your usual boring internal disagreements, issues with the game engine, and even some of the main staff becoming ill. But at least now, it can't get much worse. But it did get worse. Its cancellation also caused that Sonic live action film I mentioned in the movie video to fall through, as well as potentially being one of the major factors that killed the Sega Saturn in general. Damn. Sonic Extreme is to me the holy grail of cancelled games, and I'm so grateful there's so much information about it out there, unlike a lot of the other games in this video. But god does it hurt that this one is never going to be properly finished. At least, not officially. There's an unreleased NES game called Bioforce Ape that has the best plot description I've ever heard in my life. You play as a pet chimpanzee who goes on a quest to rescue his owners by taking a mysterious serum that mutates him into a pro wrestler. I know. Thankfully, while the game was cancelled very close to its 1992 release date, a playable version of it now exists on the internet for us to enjoy in its full glory. It's like so uncomfortably well animated. Steven Spielberg's first attempt at making a game was going to be very complicated because he was Steven Spielberg, as he planned to make a first-person parkour RPG adventure story-heavy game that, at Spielberg's request, would not include gunplay, so instead you would just violently beat people to death with your hands. The focus of the game would be on developing your relationship with this terrifying-looking alien thing called Eve, who you would have to take across the country while she was being hunted by the FBI. So it's like E.T. with a less sexy alien. Spielberg's main aim was to create a story that people could connect to because he's mentioned in the past that he's not really a huge fan of storytelling in games, probably because Bioforce 8 never came out. But guess what? The game was going to be done by EA. No fucking wonder. The trailer for the game even asked the rather arrogant question of, can a computer game make you cry? Obviously, these guys have never played Bloodborne. Steven Seagal is the final option is the name of an unreleased SNES game where you would play as the legendary Steven Seagal in a beat-em-up that utilized some of his real-life abilities like martial arts and teleportation. Except Steven Seagal was never involved. At any point, they made the sprite of him by putting a wig on a look-alike because the development team didn't actually want to pay him. A psychological horror game called Sadness was teased for the Nintendo Wii, which sure is an interesting choice of platform. Would have been right at home alongside Kirby's Epic Yarn and Poke Park Wii. The only story details we know is that you would have played as a mother having to deal with her son gradually descending into madness after being blinded in a train crash, with something like 10 different endings being available depending on the player's actions. Motion control would have let you use a torch to like scare away rats or grab items to use as weapons. It was apparently in development for around four years, but nothing concrete about the game was ever released. Even its announcement trailer used live action footage instead of any in-engine gameplay, which is always a good sign. So it's probably not too surprising that this one entered development hell and was abandoned with the closure of its studio. Boy, that was sure some good foresight with that title. Along with the cancelled Battlefront 3 for PSP, the most painful Star Wars game cancellation for me would have to be Star Wars 1313, a game where you would play as some random battle 
bounty hunter that would then be killed by Boba yes. Fett, who would then become who you would play as for the rest of the game. It looked like this one was going to be very in line with what Sony was looking for at the time with more cinematic games like Uncharted, what with the climbing and gunplay, but it was either the Disney acquisition of Lucasfilms that killed this one, or that the game just wasn't coming together behind the scenes. Regardless, God damn it, Kid Kirby would have been an SNES game done by the studio that would eventually become Rockstar. Initially, the only proof of this one's existence was just from screenshots and promotional images from magazines, but every other screenshot you're looking at now was released online by a designer who worked on the game. The title made me think it was about Kirby's son or something, but it was actually going to be a prequel about Kirby when he was younger. Does Kirby even age? The gameplay would have been reminiscent of Angry Birds of all things, with players using the SNES mouse to stretch Kirby and launch him across levels. But when that didn't sell well, because it's a fucking mouse, the game was put to rest and early Rockstar would go on to work in a less violent franchise. In 2006, there was supposed to be Aliens Crucible made by Obsidian Entertainment, which would have been an RPG sort of similar to Mass Effect, but with Xenomorphs in it. Footage from an earlier build of the game is available online that shows you playing as a group of survivors in a colony infested with aliens, with some hopefully unfinished gameplay. LEGO was going to release another LEGO Races game on the DS and Wii, which I would have played the shit out of, but aside from an occasional promo on certain set boxes and some 3D models from the developers, this one may as well have never even existed. And LEGO also cancelled Bionicle The Legend of Mata Nui just two months before its intended release date in late 2001. The game had a very troubled production, with LEGO continually being worried about the level of violence in the game pussies, and financial issues from the studio causing a lot of long unpaid hours for the employees. But the reason for it being cancelled, despite being 90% complete, has been attributed to either LEGO's concern over the game's quality, LEGO instead focusing on a pitch for another Bionicle game that eventually became the 2003 one, and just a more general concern that it wouldn't be finished in time by the release date, even though reportedly everything but the final battle with Makuta was complete. Luckily for us, an alpha build of the game made its way into the hands of Bionicle fan website Biomedia Project, who worked with the likes of game historian Liam Robertson and indie group Lightstone Studio to finish the game and release it for free online in 2019, which they did, and it's absolutely fucking amazing. Just wanted to end things here on a positive note because I'm sure this video has made you plenty miserable already. The funny thing is, I don't think I would have played or even known about most of these games had they actually just released normally as planned, but there's something about that unattainable, unfinished aspect that makes these things so interesting to read about just with the knowledge that they'll probably never be something we can actually play. But hey, we eventually got Shenmue 3, and Star Fox 2, and Duke Nukem Forever, unfortunately. So who's to say that maybe these games won't resurface one day and eventually be completed? I mean, probably not, but hey, we can hope. I mean, literally a week after my cancelled movies video came out, Nimona was revived by Netflix. So who knows, maybe this video will age just as poorly. And I sure hope it does. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in a week when they announce Half-Life 3. Trust me, guys, it's coming this time. I can feel it.